That's very good. The is in Belgium. Belgium is the size of what state here or what county? Let's see. Maryland. Maryland. Yeah. The Belgian economy. We have seen Belgium is as big as Maryland. And no, it's a big that the population of Belgium is the same as of Ohio, 11 million people. Belgian economy is 25th in the world. Belgium's currency, the Tunisian one. We are not the UK, we are inside the EU and even inside the Eurozone. US investments in Belgium are as big as in China. Belgian investments in, in the US support I guess 150,000 jobs in the US. We are the tenth investor in the world. The fourth of Emperor. You know what our is? These are chocolates. <laughs> so it could have been a problem having a dedicated terminal for police, but we are the second largest in Europe and the fourth in the world. Who was not born in Belgium? That's correct. Innovation in Belgium. Are we building buses this morning? Because of services? Or because it rains so often that these things We are the best in pharmaceuticals. That's also thanks to R&D from US companies in, based in Belgium. Which are, which are the following arts we sell in Belgium? And the French fries. I should say, good. <laughs> Tintin. I assume everybody knows Tintin. It was made into a film by... Steven Spielberg. Brussels. Thanks to the price. Might have been the dictator, but it is the capital of Europe. Belgian beer. Huh. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that was the first test. Belgium and Belgium. I'll give you some facts and figures about that. <coughs> so, neighboring countries France, Germany, Netherlands, Luxembourg, and in fact, all countries with a seaside. As we are a coastal country, all countries at the sea are our neighbors. We are just divided by international waters. Isn't that beautiful? So we are neighboring countries as well. We have quite a dense population. As you can see, 363 inhabitants per square kilometer. Now, I did, I did do my homework. I don't know how many square miles it is, but it's smaller than a square mile. Official languages, we have three official languages, Dutch, exactly the same language as in the Netherlands, with a nicer accent. French, the same language as in France, but again with a nicer accent. <laughs> German, the same language, language as in Germany, but... Right. right. Surface area, as you can see there, uh, almost 12,000 square miles, that's the size of Maryland, in the Euro, and we have 11 million inhabitants. Now, the geography. You know where Belgium is. So on the left hand side, you see it, there it is. It is squeezed into between France, Germany, <coughs> Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And we can escape from the sea. But then, what is very interesting is to, say, to see the, uh, the radius on the right hand side. So I don't know whether you can see it very well, but the smallest one is 200 miles. In 200 miles, you reach the wealthiest part of Europe, of Western Europe. You reach basically the north of France, the um, Germany, the wealthiest, the most industrialized part of Germany, the Netherlands, the southeast of the UK. So this is really the wealthiest part of, of Western Europe. Now, if you expand that and you go to 600 miles, you even include 
you've got almost from Spain and the north of Italy as well, and a big part of the uh, of Central Europe. So we can really say that Belgium is, uh, has a very central location, although it's at the seaside, we have a central location. And the access to the neighboring countries uh, is very easy. Now, how is our state structure? We have a king. When Belgium became independent in 1830, it might sound a little bit weird to Americans, but we decided to have a monarchy. So we, we obtained finally our independence because we never have been independent before. We have been ruled by all powers you can imagine: uh, Germans, Austrians, French, Spaniards, Netherlands, Germans as well. But finally, in 1830, we became independent, and we decided to have a monarchy. So the present king is King Philip, and his wife is Queen Matilda. The Prime Minister is Charles Michel. Our national holiday is July 21st, and that's in fact as you can see the anniversary of the first king succession to the throne in 1830. Now, the US is a complex country. Belgium is one as well. Very complex because we are, you know, we are small. But we try to compete with you uh, with regard to com complexity. And Belgium is also very known for its surrealism in art, because you can see here also in politics. Politics became kind of an art. So we are a federal country. And normally, a federal country is a country who was born out of different states coming together and wanting to work, to work together. Like in the US, you have states, they came together, they decided to work together. Germany, the same. Now, we decided to debate, we did the debate about We were a unitarian country, and then we suddenly say, said, no, there are some differences in this country, we have different languages. Why should we have some decentralization of ours? So and then we also realized that there is not, not only a language or cultural difference, but also the economy is quite different. The economy in the north and the economy in the south are quite different. So they decided also to have decentralization on the economic field. So they said, oh, let's have a decentralization in two types of entities. And we have first of all, the first one is the communities, and that is everything is related to people, to culture, to language. And then we have regions three regions, which is related to soil, industry, economic activities. Now, they are more or less the same. The community of farmers and the farmers region is almost the same. The French community and the Walloon region, they are more or less the same. You have, you have a tiny German community that they speak German, they are only 70,000, but they have their own parliament and their own government, so they play it very small. They are part of the Walloon region. You can see here, they speak German. Now, Brussels is in fact the complex, the, the complex part of the country because in Brussels is not, and in fact is a region by itself. But you can speak two languages here. You can speak Flemish and French in Brussels. So that's that's why it belongs both to the community of Flemish and the French community. I assume everybody has lost now. Right? <laughs> so is our government and our politicians. <laughs> now Brussels, here are some facts about Brussels. Um, before Washington was number one in the world, but now Brussels is number one uh, with regard to the number of diplomats living in Brussels. We have a diplomatic community of 52,000 people, all diplomats and their family. <laughs> As you can see, that's quite important for unemployment, but directly and indirectly, they create almost 17% of process employment. <coughs> now, process is also headquarters for the EU, European Union, and the NATO, as you know. One in three residents of process are foreigners, um, many French. There is something called tax evasion, which might probably happen to Brussels. <coughs> Moroccan people who came in because you needed labor forces. And then, uh, strangely enough, Romanians, since Romania joined the European Union, a lot of them came from Western Europe uh, to find a job. Brussels is ranked number two in Europe for number of languages spoken. Well, they did a count and they reached 104 different languages spoken in Brussels. 
It's a very dangerous population. As you can see, 11 million inhabitants in Belgium, 800,000 foreigners. The majority is uh, Flemish. Um, people are called Flemings. Then one third is Walloon, and 10% more or less in Lips and Brussels. We almost have in Belgium foreigners, and we welcome foreigners who are not welcome anymore in their country. Uh, as you can see, by the group, Karl Marx, and then an artist by the <coughs> Trade and economy. Now, as I said before, the map, uh, Belgium is located at the heart of the world's most industrialized regions. Our main industries today are pharmaceuticals, biotech, nanotechnology, automotive. We don't have our um, brands or makes of, of cars. We have a lot of suppliers who are automotive industry, machinery, and then renewable energy. International trade, imagine a country, how much we depend on foreigners, on everything which is abroad. 86% of our GDP is international trade. I don't know how much it is for the US, but it must be one single digit figure, I suppose. Ranked number four for the most effective economy in the world. That was a ranking made by the Swiss uh, institution in 2016. Science, well, we have uh, very good universities. Uh, we have recently a Nobel Prize winner. And as we said before, pharmaceuticals, we are world leader in clinical uh, trials. Uh, due also to the presence of foreign laboratories in the country. We see, you might recognize some of these pictures. <coughs> In fact, I have quite an easy life here in the U.S. because when I say it from Belgium, immediately people associate that to beer, chocolate, waffles, and knives, and it could go on. Well, some pictures of the uh, towns and cities. We are an old country. Some of our towns were created by the Romans. We have a lot of medieval castles and castles and cathedrals. And in fact, we have, we have the biggest density in the castles in the world. Leisure, cycling is still a national sport of Belgium. And as you have seen, uh, Belgium won a gold medal at the Olympics in the cycling. The men's national soccer team, the Red Devils, didn't do that in the uh, Euro Cup um, earlier this year. Spa Fracochon is a very good race track. And then we have a lot of festivals, and perhaps you remember Tomorrow World, which was here some years ago in Atlanta. In fact, I think the, there were two editions, and the third edition was, was not a very success. But that was organized by a Belgian based company, which organizes in Belgium from Tomorrow Land. So we love festivals. Some artists, medieval artists, Jan van Eyck. With the admiration of the land of Constant. <coughs> Rubens was not only an artist but also a diplomat. René Magritte, here we come to the surrealism. And we have tapestries, also a big evil art. And then, of course, uh, our comics, the Smurfs, everybody knows the Smurfs, everybody knows Tintin, but we have many others. Some well known Belgians. The inventor of the saxophone. Everybody knows the saxophone. Nobody knows where it comes from. Now we know. <laughs> and you won't forget it anymore. Mercator. The GPS uses the Mercator projector. So imagine how long we have invention lasted. Without him, we couldn't buy it our GPS. Hercule <laughs> Poirot. <laughs> Jacques Robin, the previous president of the uh, International Olympic Committee. And some years ago, we had two top tennises in the uh, well, right world and, and the world ranking in number one and two. Uh, Eddie Max called the cannibal and because of all the, uh, the competitions he won. Now, where stands Belgium in the world? Because it's a tiny country. But still, you see, in 1947, three countries, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, created a customs union called the Benelux. 
the European Union did not exist at that time, but it served as a role model for the EU. So promoting the free movement of work, capital, people, services, and goods, and basically a total, a total integration. Now, Belgium is a promoter of all regional integrations. We started with the Benelux, and we are still one of the big promoters of the European Union. The European Union might go through a crisis, but still, we think personally, and everybody in Belgium is almost convinced that the EU is a very good thing for the country and for the country. We shouldn't forget it, like that. The EU also helped to maintain peace. And Europe has been, at least Western Europe, Central and Western Europe, has been in peace for 70 years, which is amazing in a continent where making war was a kind of a sport. You know, from the, year, the war of 100 years, the, year, the war of 80 years, the war of 30 years, and then we have a couple of wars of four and five years. So 70 years without any war is a record. And we believe strongly that the EU helped a lot in that. Now, we are also convinced of the need of the EU because we host the EU headquarters. Here are some facts about Belgium in the UN, in the UN system, in the United Nations system. We were among the founding members in 1945. We served seven times in the Security Council, which is not too bad for a small country like Belgium, and we are a candidate for a term in 1920. And presently, we are in the UN Human Rights Council. And we have contributed with humanitarian aid in a lot of crises. Uh, I won't go through the whole list. In fact, you cover more or less half of the, half of the world if you uh, mention all the, all the crises going on. But Belgium and NATO have also a very strong relationship. We are also one of the founding members of the NATO. We host, again, the NATO headquarters in Brussels, but also the uh, Allied Command uh, Operations Headquarters in Casto, nearby Mons. And of course, we participate in support of the outreach, um, uh, the out of area operations like in Kosovo and Afghanistan. We are still in Afghanistan, by the way. Now, this is perhaps a little bit more important or interesting for you. What are the ties between Belgium and the USA? The USA is older than Belgium as a country. But we had some immigrants coming to uh, the USA and they established some cities and towns and you'll find some Belgian names, Brussels and Illinois are all in uh, Michigan. <coughs> Here you see uh, the one Brussels, probably very known as Hoboken, Hoboken in New Jersey is quite known. I didn't know myself that it was one in Georgia. <laughs> 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 So, but you see, we didn't go further than the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> we are not that um, courageous. <laughs> well, part of the history was Father um, the Smith, Jesuit priest, and the Catholic uh, Church was very strong in Belgium at the time, so we helped here to negotiate um, the settlement with the uh, Sioux uh, Indians. And that led to the Freedom of Fort Army. Herbert Hoover. We had a special connection with Robert Hoover before he became president because, the, in fact, nowadays we are commemorating the First World War, which ranged from 1914 to 1918. Now, in the US, most of the time you, you look at 17 because the US ended the war in April, April 6, 1917. But in fact, at a, from the very beginning of the war, uh, the Germans behaved by Bavaria and Belgium, and that brought the attention of the American people as well. So the Americans wanted to help Belgium, and they created a commission for relief in Belgium. So during the whole war, during the four years, Belgian population and part of the northern France population was fed thanks to these, uh, these commissions for relief of Belgium. Um, and he, Herbert Hood, chaired the commission uh, on the American side. Uh, he, has quite a, he is quite a prominent person, especially in Berlin, because Berlin was totally burned by the Germans during the First World War and has been rebuilt with, the aid, with donations from the USA. 
that's very interesting. When you go to the to, uh, to Google and you go to the library, the university library, you will find a lot of plaques. The Hall also has a special uh, special relation with Belgium. Also, because, because he became the first to print the life model uh, based in Belgium. Then the Marshall Plan, of course. Uh, the Marshall Plan, you know very well. In fact, it put the basis for the European Union. It forced us Europeans to work together. So if we say that the European Union is a European initiative, it's only partly true. We have to admit that without the help of the American friends, we would not have it. The NATO, uh, we, we saw it before, uh, it is still strong and alive. But the end of the Cold War changed totally uh, our relations. Um, the peace dividend, which everybody expected in the Western world, in the free world, didn't really come, come true. And we saw a lot of other crises where we, where we, most of the time, we were allies. And I wrote down some present common challenges. We are still in, NATO, in, the, in Afghanistan. The NATO is still present there. We can't, we can't withdraw our, our, our troops. Nor the USA can, neither Belgium. And the piracy. There also we are allies. Belgium joined the international efforts in the Gulf of Aden and the Gulf of Guinea. In Mali as well. <coughs> During the Arab Spring, Belgium participated in the operations in Libya. And nowadays, in fact, we are also participating in the US in the US led coalition against Daesh or ISIL or ISIS and unlawful. Um, unfortunately, we have we have to cooperate a lot in the, in very uh, bad situations. Now economic relations between the two countries. Belgian exporters find the US as number five in the ranking. And US exporters, and we, we import um, from the US in the fourth position. But US export destinations find Belgium in the fifth position. You will see that the yearly trade is more or less $50 billion between those countries. For Belgium, the US is the number one trading partner outside the EU and fifth in absolute figures. Here you can see what we are exporting, basic well, maybe chemical products, but also transport equipment, machinery, and so on. In the mineral products, you would be quite surprised to see that Belgium exports minerals. We don't have oil, we don't have gold, we don't have copper for them, but we have a lot of diamonds. Antwerp is the world diamond capital. Almost 90% of all diamonds in the world come at least one time in their life. Import. import, or do we import from the US? Oh, the products, transport equipment, machinery. Strangely enough, the, three, the top three are the same products as we export. American investments in Belgium. Oh, Belgium is an attractive place for investors. Some of the reasons it are in the central location in Europe, a high standard of living and sophisticated infrastructure and a wide number of tax incentives for the businesses. We always complain about high taxes, but if you, if you dig a little bit, you will see that there are a lot of incentives for business people. Now, the value of the investment between Belgium and the US exceeds $100 billion. And US investments in Belgium are as big as the US investments in China. Here are some other facts. Those are the ninth largest foreign investor in the USA. And also at the same time, ninth largest foreign investor. We have more than 400 Belgian companies in the US, located in 41 of these 50 states. Now, I must say that Georgia is number two in that list, after New York. Then, US subsidiaries of Belgian armed firms employ about 160, between 150 and 160,000 US workers. And you see, you can see how these Belgian investments in the US really are the right. What do we, what kind of confidence do we have here? What kind of those quality proof? Like the accent on quality, textiles, steel products, and so on and so on. So 
Have you seen these buses? I know they, they drive in Washington, D.C. They are made, they are made by one whole thousand company. Uh, these big screens in, the, in the basketball arenas are made by Barco. And if you go to the movie theater, there is a big chance you are watching that screen of a thousand company Barco. And so on. Some thousand companies, so one thousand bush in there. Basically, it's now, it was merged with Inver, which is now the biggest uh, brewery group in the world. So they're not that well known because they don't make consumer products. <coughs> the latest is the unicorn, the recycling. And then at the end, how are we officially, officially represented in the USA? Well, we have an embassy in Washington. We have, we have consular general in Atlanta, New York, and Los Angeles. We have Chamber of Commerce in New York City, and we have in Atlanta the North American Chamber of the South, and then we also have regional representatives. So the federal representatives are on the four, four, the four first lines, and then come the regional representatives. So if you have a specific interest in Flanders, you should go to the Flemish representative, you can do that for you. Uh, the same for the Union and the Brussels. Now, I'm not